Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'm here with a book review for Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel. I buddy read this with Abby McReads, who I will link down below. This book is about a group of friends during their senior year at a prep school. Blue, the main character, comes to the school specifically for her senior year, meets several very popular students, and they get involved with a very charismatic teacher who later dies. I gave this book three stars, but it's kind of a complex three-star rating because it definitely was three stars on an enjoyment level, but I also found it very worthwhile and very interesting. There were definitely several points in this book that I found very thought-provoking and very worthwhile to read, but at the same time, for a lot of this book, I was left unsure of how I was feeling, and it ultimately was just a three-star rating. One thing I really enjoyed was Blue's character and her relationship with her father. I thought it was a very fascinating discussion of a single father who raises his only child in a very unconventional way. At times, he is a very negative character in this book, and at other times, he's just a loving father. And it's one of those things that you question how much of their relationship is healthy. And it's also one of those things you don't necessarily get a definitive answer on, depending on how you read this book. And I very much enjoyed that. I also liked that this was a book you had to read slowly. I usually binge read books and I absolutely could not have binge read this. This was a book that required you to take your time and I think that was what made it perfect for a buddy read. It also kept me guessing, which I enjoyed to a degree. I think there were a lot of things in this book that I was unsure of that really worked in the book's favor and were incredibly suspenseful. But there were other points in this book where I was simply confused and unpleasantly confused. There were a number of points that felt very random. The father at one point has a girlfriend named Ava and that kind of felt like an intrusion on the story and at one point they go to Paris and I really wasn't sure what to make of the whole Paris trip. It kind of felt very out of place. I didn't understand why it existed or what was going on, but for the most part I did enjoy the kind of randomness of it. I think it worked in the book's favor and I think it made it a fascinating read. Although because it was so random, there were points where it felt like the book wasn't planned in advance. Like it had no build up, it felt like things would just happen out of the blue. And sometimes it worked in her favor, sometimes it made the book seem super exciting and very random and confusing in a good way, but sometimes it just left me feeling lost, like I didn't really care about this book because I wasn't sure what I was reading. I enjoyed the attempt to include a lot of literary references and kind of a push on academia. There was a lot of academia in this book because Blue's father is a professor and that's kind of how he raised her, but it oftentimes felt very forced and very out of place, like it didn't flow naturally with the rest of the story. And it felt very obvious that it was forced within the text. It also bothered me that a lot of the references were made up because I'm the person who actually Googles references because like I'm curious as to what they actually mean to give the story more context so I looked them up and the references in this book were made up. Like not all of them, there were some that were actual references and I definitely didn't Google all of them but there were a number that were made up and I was kind of disappointed by that. I don't think that would bother anyone just like if you're someone who likes to look up references, it kind of bothered me. I think as a whole this book was just probably not for me. It was too much for me. It felt like there was too much going on, too much that Marcia Pestle was trying to do. Abby at one point mentioned the humor in this and I often don't get humor in books so if you enjoy humor maybe it would be more enjoyable for you. I think Abby gave this four stars maybe if I'm remembering correctly. I also read this book eight months ago before reviewing this, so I'm working mostly off my notes and what I remember because it was going to bother me if I skipped this review. So that's also something that just, just so you know. But I did enjoy this book in a very strange way. I found it very worthwhile and it was one of those books I'm glad I read. And I think part of the reason I'm so glad I read it was because of the ending. I loved the ending. I can't really talk about it because it will spoil things in the book, but I thought the ending was the most well done thing in this book. It was fascinating and it gave me so much to think about after. I kept thinking about this book for weeks after I read it, just like trying to put everything together and I loved that. But at the end of the day, this was a three star read. I did enjoy reading it. I found it worthwhile. Marisha Pezzel also wrote Never World Wake, which was very popular on booktube about a year ago. I gave that one four stars and the strange thing is how similar but how different the two books were. They both focus on a friendship at a prep school during their senior year where someone dies 
and they explore a lot of toxic elements within friendship and within popularity. And initially, when I was going into this book, it sounded exactly the same as Never World Wake. But reading it, it had the same elements and describing it in the vague, it does sound very similar. But it was so incredibly different. The writing style itself was so different. The story elements, once you get into the specifics, were very, very different. But despite how similar they sounded, it's almost like these two books weren't written by the same author. That's how different they were, which is strange. But I did prefer Neverworld Wake. I do think Neverworld Wake is a much more commercial novel that has a much greater appeal than this book because this was kind of an oddball read. But I think at the end of the day, they are both equally worthwhile to me, and I'm very glad that I read them both. Mercia Pestle also has a third book called Night Film, which I haven't read yet. I don't know if I will. I did enjoy both of her books so far. I'm just not sure if I care enough to read a third. Let me know down below if you've read Special Topics in Calamity Physics and what you thought of it if you did. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see y'all again soon.